That was a lot of language, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to keep doing yeah. it okay. right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, but there's a lot of language, yeah, and there's a lot of language here in your work, and um, yeah, you're all about language. So I think it, I think it's I think it's great. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, Harry, basic question first for you. This is was in response. This was sort of commissioned as a response to. Is that true? That to an arc. Book? It was, yeah. Frances, um, at uh, a certain point, decided with her last book of poetry, um, which is called Anarch, um, to do a film project in which um, she would uh, sort of uh, solicit a few different, what she called responses to the book by uh, a few of her filmmaker friends. Um, <clears throat> the longer story is that I didn't do it on time for the book release. <laughs> And then another year passed, and, and, and then another half year passed, and I thought, she's never going to talk to me again. I should, even though, you know, she'll never show it, I should make something and send it to her, and, you know. So, um, I think she was looking for something that was like 30 seconds long, so. <laughs> <laughs> I told her I, it was accidentally 40 minutes. And, uh, so, that's how that sort of came about, but, um, well, so yeah. I watched this, you know, on, online while I was... Uh, reading the Argonauts, and you know, I might be you know overstating it, but I like I was like really struck by all of these parallels of you know, um, you know, obviously there, there's this like idea of sort of bringing this new being into the world, um, the philosophical footnotes, um, the, you know, just the the discussion the discussions on you know on on gender and um, what is what is the quote that the um, the butch angel about everyone's just you know everyone's a body um, which is which was wonderful and I was like I was like well they didn't make this to get you know it's not like you, you made these in parallel but you made them sort of the same time and I don't know maybe you could talk about that sort of coincidence or not coincidence or um, yeah you know Maggie and I live together <laughs> and um, we splash, t yeah. yeah we talk all the time and so I think that you know we're thinking together a lot of the time. Honestly, and and not just uh, Maggie and I, but you know, a whole community of people. You know, we're talking a lot, and, and we're sort of thinking together. So I think it stands to reason that a lot of the artwork that might um, get made um, has these kinds of um, concerns that are that are definitely you know overlapping because you know we all kind of are in a swirl of excitement about um, related things. Yeah, and I guess I you know in terms of parallels, I was just noting you know I think the, maybe the phrase you were looking for was when Harry was. I'm sorry, not Harry, Angela, <laughs> when, when she says, you know, okay, you know, okay, human animal, and uh, that is obviously in the beginning of my book, but I think that, um, I mean, I mean, we picked, or, you know, these movies tonight, I mean, there's a lot of language, but they're also all, as you can kind of see, like, they're kind of all, you know, they're, they're just, they're human bodies, intimate, in intimate spaces, talking to each other, you know, and sometimes, um, you know, refracted through the language of other people, obviously with like Agua Viva, but even in this case, you know, like Harry's kind of doing a, you know, the primer to life via Wikipedia type concepts, you know, in a certain way. But I think that, you know, for me, the time meters is really, um, I mean, one thing I love about it is that it's, it's this kind of romance between these two human animals. Um, but there's also, you know, like, that's our youngest son's yellow plastic shovel and the older son's bicycle. <laughs> and there's a kind of like, I feel like it's, you know, Harry's closet parent movie of like telling, telling the kids how it's gonna be, you know? And we'll hope it's not their first day, you know? But I feel like it's very moving to me for that reason. Um, super basic question, but um, can you talk about the materialization of this book? Like how it, how it became a book or, you know? Uh, hey, what did you say? Did you say did, the how, yeah, how, yeah. Okay. I said the maternalization, and I was like, oh, they're both, they're both in there, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, I'll speak to that. Yeah, well, this book, um, The Argonauts, it was kind of a book that I didn't really, I didn't really set out to write it per se, um, but there were three kind of modes of writing I was doing while I was kind of leading up to writing what I thought was the next book, but I was kind of distracting myself where I wrote, actually, um, um, Steiner, A.L. Steiner, a great um, artist who probably many of you know who made with Zachary Drucker and Mariah Garnett um, and Van that first piece that we watched tonight. Um, you know, Steiner had asked me to write something for the show Puppies and Babies that she had going up at, um, in LA, and that was a lot of fun because um, it's a really, you know, I describe it in my book, but it's a really raucous show with a lot of just what, what, what you know, I call my book subtle medical maternity. Um, um, and uh, so I was writing that, and then I was writing a talk on Eve Sedgwick, who I was asked to give at CUNY, where some great people here tonight are CUNY. And, um, 
Um, and I, of course, you know, Harry and I maybe have this in common a little bit with Excess, with the 30-second movie for Francis becoming the much longer movie. But, you know, I was asked to write a you know, short talk to give up to, in, in tribute to Eve, and I wrote, like, a 40-page essay, which, you know, all of which, three pages of which I could deliver um, there. So that, that, that uh, essay for Steiner and then the piece on Eve, um, I kind of mixed up with just diaristic writing that I was doing the first year, um, well, kind of while I was pregnant in the first year of my uh, son's life. And what I liked about it is that the projects didn't really seem like they had anything to do with each other. And then suddenly I felt like, you know, the kind of political aesthetic, you know, whatever, and we just saw some fistings, like the fist of the thing was going to be like insisting on all of these things being in the same book, you know, the same place at the same time, and um, that was going to make it about, um, you know the 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 kind of the kind of queer slash risking of the sentimental of Steiner's show with puppies and babies and then um, and then the element from you know giving homage to Eve Sedgwick's particular rendition of expansive and specific at the same time queer thinking and then this you know autobiographical writing about about caretaking and love and you know all these movies tonight as you probably have noticed are you know they're kind of they're kind of brutal and tender, but they have love in some ways as they're at, at their core too. Can you talk about the, the margins? The margins of this book? Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, part of the reason why I kept apologizing too, which is a bad habit, you know, while I was reading saying, sorry, is that like the, all the, the people who I'm quoting in the book are all listed in the, in the marginalia, um, and it's difficult, and, and, and then the, their words are all in italics, so it's kind of hard to read from without saying, now Deleuze is speaking, you know, it seems, kind of, it seems really silly. But I think in all my work, I'm looking for like a, I mean, I, I respect this in Harry's work too, like a, you know, like a fast way, you know, like a thoroughly digested way of thinking with other people um, and thinking with other knowledges. So um, the, the, the margin comments were like, I mean, the margin attributions, like the fastest way I could, I could, I could do that digestive process. But also, it kind of became like uh, family making to me. So, like, you could skim the margins and be like, okay, we got Audrey Lord here and, you know, Susan Freeman here, and now we're going to go to, you know, Deleuze here, and now we're going to go to Lucille Clifton or Allen Ginsberg or whoever we're going to. Um, but that you could almost look, and at one point, Harry, because he speaks a part of the text, uh, tells a story of the death of his mother, but that you could kind of skim the margins and kind of get the sense of who's at stake, whose other thinking is at stake, along with my own story here. Um, we can start taking questions right all the way through. People have immediate ones. Um, we'll keep going. Just check. And um, yeah. <laughs> and, and as I said, if you we'll ask, we yeah. see somebody. And if, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Fine. <laughs> God. This book seems so much more personal to me than anything else I've read by yours, other than which the death of your aunt. Uh, it seems so personal, I wonder how you felt about making that shift and how Harry felt about <laughs> making that shift. It's a million dollar question, right? Yeah. Um, um, so, uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, the question is about uh, this book being, you know, very intensely personal, um, and so about how both Maggie and Harry feel about that. <laughs> um, it's a good thing you're both here. Yeah, no, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm actually very, very pleased to be with Harry talking about this book. It's like it's like and it feels like a release valve coming off the, the tire. So I think it's really great. I don't know. You know, I think that like well, there's a there's a quote in the okay. book right that <laughs> that in which what does it say? I, I, I at one point said to Maggie, oh, yeah. we had been together about three or four years, and I was still getting used to being with someone who writes personally, um, <laughs> and uh, because I'm a very heretofore I've been a very uh, private person kind of a public person as an artist in some sense, but, but very, very private in, in another way, in most ways. And so, um, so I said at some point, or sort of earlier in our relationship, that being you know, with her was like uh, an epileptic, what did I say? It was like an epileptic being married to a strobe light artist. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so there's that quote in the book, so it's been a, it's been a journey. <laughs> Um, but at the same time, I feel like at stake, there was kind of something about, um, and I'm interested in this kind of for the long term, there was something at stake about represent, representation of certain, um, of, our, of our certain specific lives. And um, I, you know, more and more start to feel like some, um, that specificity is a way into that. Um, and so, and kind of moving, you know, 
kind of moving into categories and then out, you know, sort of beyond them. And, and so I thought that if um, Maggie and I, you know, could work through that idea, um, that I thought, you know, I thought that the whole thing was extremely exciting. Um, I think that, you know, yeah, I, mean, I think the book, I mean, the part I read to you tonight, like, I wanted to read the opening part about language because all those problems that are getting laid out about, you know, the inexpressible being contained inexpressibly within the express, or all, the, all those, all that kind of Chinese boxingness about words, um, which we're trying to echo with thinking about films to show, you know, I think, like, um, it's a... It's a kind of palimpsest that I think is interesting and useful when you're going to move into talking about issues of like gender and sexuality and queer families or queerness, and I think that uh, and, and visibility and the kind of hyper visibility of certain bodies coupled with their invisibility. And I think that you know because Harry's a really brilliant thinker and talker about issues about representation in these other spheres. You know, I, I don't think it took. It took some, but I don't think it took too much wrangling to kind of see how pulling these conversations all together into one um, could do something, I think, uh, very very interesting and very useful. And I think, I mean, I guess into your question more specifically, like, you know, I don't I don't think of this book as more personal than other things I've written, you know? So I don't, I don't quite, I don't, I mean, I'd be, you know, we can talk later, you can tell me maybe more what you think, but I think like there are certain things like, um, like, uh, like, like, you know, like, I mean, I mean, I came up with, 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 like, I don't have any of the same, I've noticed, because a lot of people ask me, like, how do you feel living in the world, like, this, as if I'm, like, a radiating, you know, thread of self-exposure or something, but my writing's never yeah. felt like that to me, and it was very natural to me, so I guess in that way, like, um, there are certain things I think are coded as more personal, maybe, like, family, maybe, or, like, giving birth, or things like that, that maybe, um, like if you're literally like Annie Sprinkle, you know, come check out my cervix with like a light, you know, like that, that might for some people seem really like personal. <laughs> like, you know, I, don't, I don't think for like Annie, for example, I don't think it really does, and maybe for me it doesn't. We'll see in the lobby. I don't know, but um, but I think, <laughs> but I think that, but I think, I mean, I guess for me everything. I mean, I guess for me, what's personal in life is showing your hand about what you care most about, you know? And I think, like, whatever you're really interested in is what's personal to you. And, like, in Harry's world, like, and I know because I live with him, you know, when he's, like, having, you know, Angela's character, you know, describe, like, wedge and force and a surcharge or, like, you know, or or all, all, like, like physical phenomena and, you know, what, you know what, what molecules cling to what, like, that's personal because, like, those are really the things that, that, that are at issue, you know, in Harry's life. I think in some ways, you know, I mean, he is a diehard materialist in terms of thinking about that kind of thing. And I think, and I think for me, whether it's criticism or, you know, quote unquote memoir or, uh, you know, art catalog essays or whatever it is, like, so long as I'm kind of leaving it all on the floor with what my best thoughts are, um, that's what feels personal to me, not really specific, um, specific types of information or, 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 or veins of inquiry, I guess, if that makes sense. This is a question for Harry, I guess. Um, you know, um, in, in the book, you're described as someone who thinks not only words aren't good enough, but they're corrosive. But as Maggie noted, there is all this language, and the, and the uh, character who talks so much is really quite, not only quite charming, but really effective with her language. So I was surprised by that. I, and I just wanted to know what your take on that was. Well, you know, the fact is my I'm obsessed with language and a lot and I'm actually also obsessed with artwork that consists mainly of language um, as well. And and so even though all of these years I've been um, so impressed with artists, um, you know, when I was a younger person and would see artists like uh, who just didn't use any language at all. I was I thought that, that was kind of magical and amazing that, that things could happen without language. On the other hand, I've also been struggling with it and kind of disappointed in other ways, um, with especially naming and, and categories, um, but also just with the idea that um, I, I for especially when I met Maggie, I was really almost like really far out on this idea of with 
that my brain had been <laughs> ruined by language, and that I really just wanted to connect with this flow of isness, which is really funny because uh, uh, Clarice Lispector is trying to, I think, describe that in, in Agua With Viva. a lot of language. <laughs> yeah, with a lot of language. Um, but so, you know, I was really obsessed with that idea, and that if I hadn't been, you know, trained, you know, into these kind of um, shorthands that I, I would still be able to sort of connect in this kind of bigger way. And, you know, it was, and so the, the first part of the book kind of um, narrates that discussion a little bit. And, and I think that, you know, it, part of the narrative is that Maggie comes around to understand that, that um, certain, certain bits of language don't, don't, aren't, aren't enough. And, and I, you know, am narrativized anyway to, to come around and acknowledge that, um, <laughs> we, did, uh, we did actually have a, an email exchange, which was quite nice, which, and I remember it, because mainly we emailed when we first met. Um, but um, I, she finally said, sure, fine. If you're comparing the use of language to, you know, being the bliss of being with everything, you know, or the bliss of being with isness, sure, it pales in comparison. But barring that, it's pretty cool, and it does a lot. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Um, so, so that said, it, it actually, if you look at the history of the art that I made, it doesn't quite make sense that, um, that I, you know, would, would be said to, to hate language. But there is, there is, especially when we met, there was kind of a, a lot of mistrust of sense-making. Yeah, I'm sort of um, interested in how you both feel about the quicksand nature of language to not communicate the authenticity of the moment or the person or the reality, that kind of tension. So, Harry, you are visual and, and obsessed with words in the current show, you know, but, it's, but you're visual. And Maggie, you're about that word on a piece of paper of, uh, that, that vibrates in, in, in tension also. So where, how do we communicate? within the context of vocabulary that is old and how do we invent, if that's the word, a new vocabulary that communicates, which is what a lot of your writing seems to be about to me. Meg? No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I'm still thinking. Well, you know, it could be one of those question comments that you just let ring out. <laughs> A question for the times. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, you know, I guess it's just because I because I love language and you know and love poetry so much. It's just like. I don't know. I mean, that, that whole thing in the beginning I read to you that says, like, lo, what I would say to you were words good enough kind of comes from a joke that I used to have with my friend Adrian Trescott, who's an amazing um, dancer choreographer, has this great show about one woman show about rape, starring her pussy and nothing, nothing else downtown right now. But anyway, but Adrian and I, we, we were dancers together in a different life. Um, and we always hated it when people, like, in the dance world would, like, they'd go on stage and, like, you know, they kind of go, like, like, you know, like, like what, I, what I could talk, it's like a ballet move, like, what I could talk, I would express my love, we'd be like, just dance, for God's sake, dance is good, dance communicates, like, you know, move your body, you know, so I think, like, I feel kind of the same way about poetry, it's like, with that, with that gesture, I feel like, it does, like, a, maybe, like, back to the, you know, sure, paling in comparison with the bliss of, you know, absolute, you know, oneness, but beyond that, you know, there's a lot to be excited about, so, um, I guess I just, I guess I'm just really interested in, um, uh, I, there's like a magic, you know, in poetry or even, I mean, hopefully in like writing where you, um, you know, sentence by sentence or word by word, atomistically, it may not feel as though it's going to amount to much. But, you know, ideally, if you've kind of, again, kind of laid it on the floor with some, in some right way, you know, the sum of the parts of the thing uh, speaks to indeter indeterminacies um, and grayscale areas, the individual atomistic parts don't, you know, and that's, and that's the beauty of the thing, you know, and that's what I think we're all, we're all after, but you can't go after it, you know, like, like you know, net and hooks, you, you, you have to, you know, as they say in the parables, go, you know, with your hands, with your hands empty and see what, and see what you get, you know. Yeah. Harry, you have a lot of words in Maggie's book when you write about your mother's death, and you do so very, very moving. And 
I'd be interested in knowing how you both uh, decided to work with that writing. Thank you. Um, you talk. Okay, I just talked, but I'll talk again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 uh, Harry's mom died uh, in 2010, and you know, weirdly, when I was compiling a list of those people who died in the back of my book, you know, Eve and Harry's mom and other people all through the writing of the book, they all died of breast cancer, um, except for Harry's dog, who's also listed in the back. But, um, but I think, you know, it happened at the same time as we were kind of trying to get pregnant, um, and, and I'd, I'd wanted her to stay alive, you know, for that to happen. And so my mind, her death, and, and Iggy, my son's birth, were kind of always paired um, but they weren't paired temporarily. So in that kind of way, writing can do things that you wish life had done. Um, I had kind of dis I kind of decided, I mean, it seems super cheesy, and here again, we're back with like Steiner's Puppies and Babies show, where like when Steiner made that show, she was like, am I really gonna make a show of all the photographs I've taken of puppies and babies over the years? Like, give me a fucking break. Like, that is the most ridiculous <laughs> idea on God's earth. But like, but you know, she did it because she's, you know, a queer genius, and you know, and it's, it's like fucked up and great, you know, in its way. But I think I had this idea too of like, well, what if I were kind of telling the story of Harry's mother's death and his birth, you know, as if they were contemporaneous in some, in some ether somewhere else. But when I went to start to try and do that, I thought, I remember that Harry had written this long email and sent it to his friends describing um, being by his mother's bedside as she died. And I thought, and you know, it was a beautiful, it was a beautiful rendition. And I just thought, why on earth would I rewrite that story? So up in the privacy of my own writing room, I paired them together and <laughs> weaved it in and came back down to the house with fingers crossed because I thought it seemed good and said, you know, what do you think? Your words, my book. And he said, thumbs up. And I thought, great. <laughs> Super collaborative. It's yeah. nice to, yeah, to hear about yeah. this process. I think that is as about as collaborative as probably as <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Steal thefting words and inserting them. <laughs> other people besides Harry yeah. yeah I don't know you know there's a line in the book that says how can art be both a free expression and also a negotiation you know and a lot of people have asked me about that and kind of you know like worried you know like I worried I think I don't know if Liz Harris is here but I remember Liz uh, about Columbia I was there a few weeks ago and she said to me, I had a feeling there was another book that Harry didn't invent that was like somewhere else behind this one or something. Is that true? And I was like, not, no, not really. You know what I mean? But I, I think that it's so like worried in that sense of like maybe the negotiation represents like not the, not the purest art or something like that. I don't. In this particular book project, that's just not that that, that couldn't be the case. You know, I mean, I've written books um, that were that. That I didn't show people as many parts from, but this book just wasn't going to be that one. I mean, I think with every with every project I've done, like, I mean, even like in my book, The Art of Cruelty, like I wrote about a writer I really admire, Brian Evanson, you know, whom I recommend to you all. And um, but you know, even even to Brian, I wrote and was like, you know, I'm super excited about your work. I've said a lot of great things about it. There's some kind of critical things in here too. You know, just want you to know, you know, because it's like, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll do that. Like, you know, I'm not like really. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'll kind of make a list of people who. I think might want to see something so as not to be shocked by it when it when, when it comes out in whatever way you know um, and then you know and there might that might not be the most inclusive list that it could be but it's like the but it's always the list that I feel ethically sane and right about you know um, we have time for one more um, I have a quick interstitial question how do you feel about the reviews <laughs> there have been there have been so many yeah 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 um, I ask because I've, I've read a lot of them and they're really glowing, but they're also kind of like, 
they're somehow unsatisfying to me. Um, in that, tell me more. Well, um, <laughs> they kind of just like it's it's like, I, well, I, sh I won't I won't call out exactly the exact publications, but um, they sort of just reiterate what you're saying, and they're just like, this is great. Right. You know, um, and I'm curious about if you have a stand, if you've noticed that or have a stance on that. I mean, it's wonderful, but yeah, it's I also know. like we're, we're, huh. we're moving into gift tours in the mount yeah. territory, but I'll go there a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. No, I don't know. No, I mean, I think it's been great. I think that. I mean, this is a book that seemed, I won't say like entirely esoteric, but I was surprised, and I think that my fantastic publisher, Grey Wolf, some people might be here tonight, maybe Fiona, if you're here, um, and PJ, beloved, um, like who helped me put into the world, you know, who didn't actually think of it necessarily as esoteric as I maybe thought because of all the um, theoretical references. So it was really, really uh, wonderful to, to be kind of buoyed into a more mainstream recognition for this book, but it wasn't one that I that I necessarily imagined while writing with that. And I think that you know it's been really instructive because, uh, you know, just like this crowd here tonight, like a lot of you, like that Harry and I know and stuff. Like, there's a real difference with writing about communities like inside them and outside them. And I think that um, some of that like it's great thing is probably phobia about like that that if you aren't like at home in the communities that we're describing or with the issues in the book that you're not going to like get kind of deep you know dig into them or something whereas if it's like um you know i'm really uh you know the book is kind of combative in its way it's not like i actually thought it would be a book that would make probably like make a lot of people uh you know grumpy and so it's been, it's been a little odd and you know and then there are some places like the new york times that you know god bless them but are having this like uh, trans visibility campaign, but you know, it leaves a lot to be desired in terms of their super kind of almost eugenics way that they're going about uh, describing these issues. So I think that, you know, hopefully, I mean, that's a little boldly put, but um, I, <laughs> um, I think, uh, you know, my hope is that with, with, with different communities interacting with it, that, you know, more and more good will come of it, you know. I'm getting that. Um, if there's one more burning question, or we will just um, ask you questions during the Q&A, which is to follow, if that's okay. Oh, oh, the Q&A to follow, my Sorry, God. Sorry, I'm sorry. Like uh, of, like no, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, the signing, but it's also a third Q&A. Q &A. You're going to read, too, also, and we're going to show some stuff. Okay. Thank um, you, guys. Yeah, no, thank you so much. Yeah. No, thanks, guys.